Hi, it's Bruce Whipple. The, uh, this morning I was thinking about why should you attend the upcoming webinar this week? Good question. And uh, what I began to do was take a look at some of the statistics on weight loss. And it really is pretty eye-opening when you look at that. If you look at uh, the latest statistics that I was able to find, about 108 million people in the United States are on a diet during a year. Just uh, basically one-third of the population. What's also interesting is about 85% of those are estimated to be women, which probably only means that they care about losing weight and uh, men have pretty much given up. Now that's an overgeneralization, I'm sure, but the fact that women diet, and basically very few men do when you look at the 85% that are on a diet is pretty interesting. Uh, it's estimated about $60 billion is spent a year. But the thing that's really amazing is you can see a lot of programs that talk about, try this, they'll show you testimonials of, of what happened, but rarely what anyone talks about is the fact that of people who do lose weight, about 95%, estimated some people as high as 98%, fail and end up gaining that weight back within one to five years. And of the 108 million people that are on a diet in any year, they usually try it four to five times during that year, and they usually start right after January 1st. Not a big surprise there, obviously. So I began to think about why is that and to look into that, and I did a lot of research previously on the brain and weight gain and weight loss. But what's pretty interesting about that is I can't think of a single thing that has that high a failure rate of 95% and people keep going back to it. So whatever new diet is looked at, clearly um, it doesn't work. It doesn't work long term. And so why is that? The other thing that I found that really interesting was that uh, recently Oprah bought a 10% stake in Weight Watchers. She has, without question, been tremendously successful, but she struggled her whole life with her weight. And recently she did an interview with Barbara Walters where Barbara Walters asked her at the end of your life as you look back, what was the one thing that uh, you'd be disappointed if you didn't accomplish? And with all her accomplishments, she said that she would want to be able to say she made peace with her weight. Not that she lost the weight, but to make peace with her weight. And so, you know, when you look at a person like that, who's so successful in so many other areas, why is it that she can't be successful and lose the weight she wanted to lose in that? She lost it. If you go back a bunch of years, and I remember the picture of her in the tremendously small pair of uh, blue jeans when she did lose that weight, but she gained that weight back. So something else is going on, and that's what we're going to talk about. So if you take a look, for instance, at the Okinawans, they were among the longest living people in the world, and they were definitely the leanest people in Japan. And after World War II, the Americans came in, set up government uh, until 1972. And during that time, they brought the standard American diet, and they also brought an awful lot of fast food. And within those two generations, the Okinawans went from being the leanest people in Japan to the heaviest people in Japan. And now there's a big push to try to get back to the way they used to eat. So clearly diet has an awful lot to do with obesity because there wasn't an obesity problem if you go back in years as opposed to looking now at what the basic epidemic is with respect to obesity. And it's not just America, it's worldwide. So, why do so many people fail and what can we do about it? We're going to spend a lot of time on the webinar talking about just that, but you really have to look at the brain and you have to look at hormones that interact with the brain and specifically what they do to hunger and cravings. And there's a hormone that's produced by the fat cells, which is called leptin. And leptin regulates that feeling of hunger or satiety or being satiated. And if you take a look in nature, uh, you don't really see obese animals. If you take a look at the three that are obese, people, dogs, cats, they all live in the same place. So there's something to be learned by that. Basically the same place as our house, obviously. So what can we do about it? If you take a look at leptin, and as I say, we're going to spend a lot more time on this. They did studies with rats where a rat was born with no leptin. And if you take, and I'll show a picture of that, but if you take a look at that rat versus a normal rat, 
That rat did nothing but eat. Then they introduced leptin with some shots and that rat ended up losing the weight. So if leptin is produced by fat cells and if you're overweight, what's the problem? Why doesn't it regulate that you should stop eating? Well, the problem with that is insulin levels. And insulin levels can block basically the leptin and reaction to leptin. So what you want to do is take a look at really two things, your leptin and your insulin, get those under control. The way you get those under control is through flour and sugar and basically to eliminate that to the extent that you can eliminate all that. And it happens pretty quickly. And what, uh, as with the rats, what they found was when they got leptin back on board and working, the weight naturally came back and rats that were obese now became thin. So if you understand that, if you can work towards that, and willpower is not the answer. We're going to talk about willpower in a lot of details. Uh, you will lose the fight with willpower. And I remember the first dietitian saying, you're not going to lose weight with willpower. You can do it for a little while, but eventually you will lose that battle. And she was absolutely right. So we're going to talk about those things. That's why I think this is so important. Um, if you've tried diets before and they haven't worked, I guess I would ask, have you ever taken a look at or has anyone ever showed you the interaction with the brain and those hormones of leptin and insulin and why those are so critically important to getting this under control. The other thing we're going to talk about is obesity is a piece of the puzzle, but more Americans today are dying, men and women, from cardiac disease and any other cause. And we'll talk about what can be done to reduce your cholesterol levels and get your blood chemistry under control. And I mentioned that when I started that process, I was amazed at how fast it happened. I dropped my cholesterol by 81 points in two months. And so it didn't take very long to get that sorted out. So we'll talk about all those things. So in conclusion, those are the reasons that I think it's really important that you attend this webinar. And I look forward to that webinar, meeting you. I'll do a Q&A uh, as long as you want to go.